Do you ever feel like the government's watching you? Are aliens reading your mind? Today, I'm going to show you how to make a nice handy dandy hat. <laughs> that happens to look a lot like a kill cone. And if you're one of those people like we are, who don't trust what big business is putting in your foods, at some point in time you would want to raise your own meat. And if you do, well, it comes a time when you're going to have to slaughter that meat to eat it. Uh, you can have some things processed, but taking a handful of chickens down to the butcher doesn't really you know, cost you more. It would probably be good. It's really not hard to do yourself. Matter of fact, my wife, she's uh, doing a real handy at uh, getting the chickens. So today, I'm going to show you how to make a kill cone. Now, there are several designs out there online, and I've looked at uh, a few of them. Um, and I made some modifications, follow after one guy's uh, thing, but uh, made some modifications to it. Um, but the premise is, is uh, you can go down to uh, and buy a uh, uh, 14 inch by 10 feet of this, and you can get you about four cones out of it, maybe five. Um, and uh, that'll cost you about 15 bucks. Where well, the cone itself generally runs you about $20 a piece. Um, and they're kind of quite expensive. Uh, and, you know, honestly, I mean, that's pretty sturdy. So I don't think that uh, that the uh, purchasing is really going to get you a, a better quality. Um, now, before we start, and I'll show a picture of this, but uh, before you start, the overall dimensions on that thing is, uh, uh, it's a trapezoidal shape like this, which uh, and you'll have... Uh, 14 inches on top and 30 inches on the bottom, the wider side. And then, of course, it's 14 inches wide. But uh, I do a couple things different. One, I do bend the, the top and bottom of the cone over. We'll bend it at a quarter of an inch. And we'll also bend the sides a half an inch uh, on opposing directions. And I'll show you a little bit after that, or when we do that, what I did it for. <coughs> now, Tool-wise, you need something to cut the tin snip with. You can do that with a, uh, or the, the flashing. You can do that with the uh, tin snips, or um, if you got a Dremel with a metal wheel cutter, that'll work. Um, you can use a, a uh, uh, utility knife and score it a few times and bend it back and forth through a break along that line pretty good. Uh, it does take a little more work that way, and working with a 10-foot piece of tin kind of gets a little uh, handy. Uh, the other tools I'd recommend is a hammer, a uh, straight edge. Uh, I've also got a longer one that I use to, to help mark things out, but also use this one because it gives me a good 90 degrees. There's something similar. Um, you'll want some short rivets. I think they call these yeah, the short rivets. I got one eighth inch uh, rivet uh, gun and a drill. Of course, with the one eighth bit to go with the uh, the rivets I got. Uh, other tools, I find a little clamp comes in real handy. Uh, this helps to uh, not only hold the metal, but if I, if I need to bend it closer so that the rivet fits, it, it works real well for that too. Um, other items you may want is a pair of pliers to make a little bend here or there. Um, aside from cutting the trapezoidal shape, I also cut the corners off a little bit. These corners end up sticking up a little bit. So the more you, you cut back just a little bit, you can reduce some of that stick up. Uh, but first, what we're going to do, uh, as you see, we're going to get that piece cut out. I'm not going to bore you with cutting one out. But what we're going to do first is bend the tops and the bottoms. And then uh, we'll bend the, there are them over a quarter inch. And you want to bend them to the outside of your interior. So you want them bent around the outside. So look at your metal, figure out which side you want, which way. Uh, as you can see on this cone, I still had the sticker attached, so I bent them to the outside on that. Uh, that way the sticker didn't get on the inside, and I didn't have to worry about it collecting blood or anything like that to have to clean off. So, in case you ain't noticed, I'm doing this in the kitchen. So, but it's all right. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of pounding to, uh, to get this done. So I'll go ahead and get started. 
and we'll probably skip through and fast forward a little bit on this. And it doesn't have to be perfect on these uh, first couple of bends, it really don't. But you want to get them, you know, somewhat kind of square. But it's just going to take a light, light, nice, light little tap on a downstroke. Um, you can use a ball peen hammer or even a tack hammer for all I care. Uh, it's really not hard to bend. But it just takes nice little slow and easy bends down. I generally start from the center and work out. Once you get it down a little bit, then we're going to go a little bit sharper on the bend. And then we'll slide it out from the table just a little bit. I'm going to go straight in to bend a little bit more. These will generally, generally want to slide back a little bit. You can Continue to bend it. We want to bend it all the way over uh, to the 90 degrees. So I'm just going to again work from the center out. You get it kind of bent all the way over. Um, let me go ahead and move this stuff off the table to make a little noise. Besides, if I'm breaking, my wife might divorce me. <laughs> yeah, who wants to have cook for me? <laughs> I pluck chickens myself. Stick your hand in there, your wife stick your hands in there, there's nothing to cut out. Um, <coughs> we'll go ahead and do it to the other side real quick. And uh, I have my wife fast forward on the video, so you got to watch me pound on it all the time.
All right, from here, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna take about a half inch along this edge and I wanna bend it one inward and one outward. You want them on opposing directions. And what that'll do is when you bring these together, it'll make like a, uh, like a little Z and catch each other. Uh, what that does is two things. A lot of the instructions you see out there, they just overlap it and they put several rivets in there. But by making that bend in there, I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, it One, it gives it a lot more rigidity. And I don't need to use but two rivets on this. There's, it's not coming apart. It's not going to separate from the center. Um, it's tight on the inside. So I like using it doing that way because it, you know, getting that rivet tool down in here really kind of a pain in the butt. But, uh, and it also, there's no edge to cut. If I stick my hand in there, my wife sticks her hand in there, there's nothing to touch it. Uh, nowhere on this where you get to cut by a piece of um, uh, sharp metal. So we'll do that on this one as well. And for that one, I do, you want to be a little bit more precise. So what I'll do is I'll take a Sharpie and uh, a little measuring tool here. And uh, I'm just gonna mark a oh, half inch on each side. I'm gonna mark it close to the edge here. That way, um, when I do this, uh, like, I, you, know, you don't need to draw a line all across, it doesn't really do any good. Uh, I'm gonna mark the other one up real quick. But you don't have to mark a whole line because you're not going to be able to tell where that line goes uh, on your edge. So, again, half inch is all I'm working. On each side, and I'm just going to mark it close to the ends here. Doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. Pretty close to do. Uh, chicken's ain't going to mind. I don't think I, I won't complain yet. It's always a possibility, I guess. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this edge of the table that I'm using here, I'm gonna line one end up here and one end up there. I'm gonna go right back to my bend in here. There. And again, this light nice little taps down. Remember to check your, uh, your metal every now and then if you feel it slide. Make sure it gets back on. Okay, on, uh, on par there. Pull it out just a little bit. different on this compared to the other side is we obviously don't want it real tight against the metal this way. Uh, if you do that, you won't be able to slide the other piece of metal on the other. So we'll see the work and bend this over. And I'll show you a little trick I do. Get going. Uh, once I get that thing bent over to where I'm getting on downstroke, I'll put my handy little square in there again. Square gets kind of tight in there. That's all right. Let's continue to add down this a little bit. 
And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm, and now that I got it flat where I want it, I'm just going to bend it up a little bit all the way through. Just a little bit. That that enables that metal slide behind it a lot easier. Um, the reason I flatten it completely down versus not bending it all the way is because it's still relatively flat back here. Um, so versus having a real wavy thing, uh, it wouldn't seal very well around it. So as you can see, when this cone comes in and it bends around, this edge has got to bend this way. So we go ahead and lock underneath it. So I've got that one already marked, and we'll do this side as well. Same process as we just did on the that side there. Find my marks, drop in the edge, pull it down. side. First going to loosen up that gap a little bit there. Just a little bit. Right. So the next part does get a little tricky. Uh, but we're going to bend it over. And you want to make a nice, nice bend. So what I do, there's a couple different ways you can do it, but what I generally like to do is I just kind of walk it down and start bending the seam a little bit and do that on both sides and it'll make it a little bit easier for when you want to actually roll it in place. So we do it on both sides here. It doesn't have to be perfect bend, you get plenty of time to make that, uh, that metal bend a little easier. It's a bit kind of somewhat bent because the, uh, like I said, with this bent roll on the top, gives you a little more safety, but it also causes uh, just a little bit of uh, stiffness up there that you got to work around. Then what I'll do is I'll just grab it, bend it over, Give it a little bit of extra bend here. That's all you know where it's going to be, but what I'm trying to do is relax that metal a little bit so that I can work with it without it springing back on me. Because um, that, that spring back can cause you to cut yourself. Uh, I'll just put that in here. Just lock that in up there, lock that in down there. Set it about where you want it to be. 
And one thing you'll notice is a lot of people struggle in their videos to hold on to that. They clamp it, do all kinds of weird things. You can see I don't have to, I can just hold one spot and actually I can let it go. And it'll pretty much stay where it's at. So the rivets aren't holding that metal together, it's really holding it from sliding apart. Uh, and it doesn't have, work, have as much tension to it. Uh, from this point, what we're going to do is we're going to set a ribbon on top and one on bottom. You can do one in the middle too if you truly want to. Uh, I don't think it's really needed, but uh, you could if you felt safer for it. But what I like to do is use a block of wood and uh, I'll just stick that out a little bit. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take this hammer. I'm going to give it a couple good pounds here. Just to thin up that metal or make it as thin as I can get it here. Uh, and then while I'm here, eighth inch drill bit. Set that up in there. I'm going to go right down between those seams. There, just like that. And then, now it's time for the rivet and the rivet gun. So, Just like that. Just like that. Now uh, you gotta rivet it up. There's nothing to catch you there. And then we're gonna do the other same thing to the other side. Now this side works a little bit trickier because obviously, I mean if I was in my shop I can stick a pipe underneath there and be able to hit it, but I can't do that on this table. Uh, but again, that's where one of these comes in handy. Because you can take this. in there that's where you want that rivet to go. I'll show you here in just a second. I know my hands are in the way. Crank down on that thing real quick. And this is effectively doing this doing the same thing that beating it with the hammer did earlier. Maybe not quite as effective, but it does work. That ensures that the rivet makes good contact. Um, we'll do that again. Drill here. This one is a bit more trickier in the fact that it's a narrower end, so the root's got to go in first, be done, and then you got to kind of stick it in there. All right, oh, uh, you got it. All right, sorry about that, folks. Um, needed another set of hands here to help me with this because I'm not in my shop. But essentially, I've got the rivet going through, and then what I'll do to make sure it stays tight as I'll lean the board down on this. I want that board just before the rivet, but not so close that it's going to interfere with the rivet. And then uh, that'll give me something I can push down on it with. And then I can grab that rivet tool. And ready.
to expand far enough in there. But as you see, on the inside of the rivet stays pretty smooth. Right there. And like I said, that's pretty stout, guys. I mean, you see me kind of fighting with it a bit. Um, last but not least, I don't like having this little piece hang above here. So what I'll do is I'll bend it over. Just bend it over so that it, it don't, there's nothing to cut anybody out. I mean, you can rub a finger on that all you want to. You gotta cut yourself. And uh, pretty much the same process as before. Uh, except with well, this one, it's a little bit easier because it's got doubled up metal there. So really all you need to do is just really start to tap it. And you can see it'll just start to bend on you. And then once you get it over all the way, bring it back down to the table. And you want to pound this one in really good. Uh, that way, and then of course clean up any edges. Uh, sandpaper will work. File. Nothing there to you cut yourself on. And it still gives you enough tab where you put your drill you hole and attach that to your post. Uh, but it gives you a pretty decent sized hole in the front there. Um, and then, uh, of course, the chicken back here. Or you can protect yourself from the government. <laughs> Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope uh, you decided to make a kill cone. Let me, let me know how it worked out for you. Uh, if you got a different idea or a different plan, or let me know. Um, like I say, this is the first two that I've made, and they're not coming out too terribly bad. I like how rigid they are, and they definitely, I like the idea that no matter where you rub on this thing, you're not going to get cut. Um, I don't like that with the other plans I saw. They had a, an end open, a sharp edge. But let me know. And uh, heck, you can put a couple of good chicken recipes in there in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, where they are, the uh, Devon Pickers Farm. And uh, hit like, subscribe, leave your comments. You guys have a good evening. And share the video.